Hello, humans. Did you ever harbour dreams of having your own sci-fi cockpit covered in switches and lights and gizmos that you could just play in like you're in Star Wars? I know I did. And now I've got one. Wanna know how to make it? Follow me. Anything I make starts with a drawing, and in this case, a washing machine door. This is going to be our porthole, and so I start by taking measurements and building a frame upon which I can attach it using the hinged bracket. Once I have my measurements, I drew up the rough plans for my basic frame. I made a list of all the lengths of 2x4 I needed, then cut and marked everything. No fancy joints here, I just used bar clamps to hold the wood together at the joins, drill pilot holes, and then follow them with screws. I built the chair first so I could use that as a reference for the height of the porthole, as well as the size of the cockpit overall. I draw out the remaining frames and start cutting. If we were making this for a feature, it would likely be designed in CAD and then 3D printed in sections. Or we could make fiberglass pieces from moulds, or sculpt sections from foam. But as ever with this channel, we're making stuff for free, or as close to, and we don't really want to produce that amount of plastic for this humble YouTube video. What we do have is a whole bunch of leftover 4x2 timber and ply sheets lying around, which are also the kind of materials most anyone can get access to. It means we won't have any nice curves on the interior, but at least the flat surfaces will make attaching set dressing nice and easy. With the front sections built, I move on to the angled sections above that will connect to the ceiling. I approach it from the perspective that we're only shooting the inside, not the outside, so I just cut the angles and build them piece by piece. Knowing the only thing that matters is that there's a surface on the inside onto which I can attach all the edges of the interior panels. I then cut and screw triangular chocks into the frames to attach them to each other. Then I build and attach the side and angle sections, then finish with the ceiling frame. What do you know, turns out C-stands and clamps really are great for everything. Porthole. As you can see, I've made it in two pieces. My thinking is I want to shoot pretty much all three quarter shots and profile shots from this side. And so what I've had to do, which has kind of been the most complicated part of the build in a lot of ways, is build it so that it is actually removable. So the um, front and right section is one piece and then this left section is another piece. So I've bolted them together. I've got some big M10 100 mil bolts, washers and nuts. So I've got four of those running along here, um, rather than screws, which are just eventually screw up the wood. Um, I've gone for bolts and then that way we just unscrew them and then we pull it apart. Nice and easy for while we're shooting. Humans, did you know that we have a Patreon running? And for tier three and four patrons, you get these episodes a day early. Oh yeah, so get over there. Give us some money. Good enough, I think. So next step is to start putting the panels on. Then I'm going to fill the gaps with sealant. Then I'm gonna paint it. I'm gonna paint it in here because I'm not using spray paint. There's no need for like a perfect finish. Doesn't matter if there's a few brush strokes on it. A, because it's really dark paint. And B, because the panels are essentially just a base layer on which I'm then gonna cover it in stuff. I'm talking about monitors. I'm talking about bits of tubing, gas canisters. I'm just gonna fill it. Basically cover every surface with stuff that looks like either it should be there or it just belongs in a sci-fi cockpit. On that note, enter JP with a very special box of tricks. Some of it's from personal unfinished projects, sure. some from other productions that I've been involved with. I just got a load of buttons and switches and different rocker oh, switches and all this kind of stuff, twiddly knobs that would fit in the pre-drilled holes. There's switches, there's switches with lights and things. And... Buttons, buttons, switches. Bomb doors. Bomb doors. Have a little bomb door in our submarine. <laughs> Why not? Ah. Yes, 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 yes. This is a particularly weird one. I like the overhead idea, so we can literally 
Now that, to me, looks like the inside of a lamp. Yes. Housing. And it is. It is very surprising how many household objects can be used and repurposed for either set dressing or model making. This is a ice cube tray. It's a cutlery drawer, but yeah. if you look at the back of it, that's quite an interesting yeah, texture is, and yeah. shape. Pipes. Pipes. Lots of pipes. Yes. There's another small panel. Games joystick. It's all about textures and interesting patterns and things. Like that, that looks like it could be, say, an astronaut would wear uh, yeah. or someone out in space. Now, one of the things that I know I want is to have some monitors in front of Pete, which are not only going to look cool in the shot behind him, but they're also going to kind of act as lighting on his face, like a kind of wraparound key light. Now, we've got two pads and JP has his big tablet. Um, now you can buy, you know, cases uh, for tablets, but I just, it's just more plastic. It's just more stuff that's probably gonna get thrown away ultimately, when actually it's something I can build quite easily. So I'm gonna use my offcuts of ply, and I am gonna make some little kind of slide-in housings for our tablets. The other benefit is it's making, gonna make them really easy to mount onto the wood. So I'll literally just use a little wooden chock and drill it in, and that'll hold it in place. So yeah, save plastic, use offcuts. Earbuds in because this thing is noisy. Cutting on the outside of the line that I'm using, and then that way I know I haven't cut into it too much, and then just use a sanding block just to finish it off. So I make sure I can see that line so I know exactly where I want my line to be. So my plan is to cut a little frame that will literally just go around there, leaving one side open. That way we can get in there to charge it without moving it. It also means that we can just slide it in there. So one thin frame around the edge so that that sits within it, and then a deeper frame that will then frame our image. Okay, so our tablet holders are all made. I've just stuck chocks on the back of them because I just I want them to kind of sit proud from the wall a little bit. Any extra depth, shadow, all that kind of stuff, it all just builds more interest in the image. I've got a little selection of monitors that I've found basically just kind of lying around in the studio. Stuff we kind of knew was really outdated and we were never going to use again, but I held on to for just this kind of reason. And it's at these times I'm really glad that I did. So this is a pretty old one. I think this is like an old 720p monitor I used to use out in the field. It comes with its own mounting gadget, which is amazing. So that's gonna make that really simple. I'm literally just gonna bolt that for an extra monitor. I don't even know where this came from. Uh, I just found it up on the balcony. And now we're taking it all the way back. Can anybody tell me what this is? This is a reel-to-reel -reel film editing machine. This is this is the resolve of the 1970s. <laughs> so this would actually feed uh, the, the your film right through there. Essentially it's a glorified light box. It's just so gloriously old school I've got to get this in. There's something about these really chunky old monitors that are just very appealing, particularly in a sort of sci-fi cockpit context. Uh, so I think what I'm going to try and do is just unscrew these bad boys and find some way to mount it because I just, I, come on, look at it, come on. Okay, this is, this, is, this is kind of groovy. Like, again, something I've been holding on to for about three or four years in the studio since we had a big party here one summer. Uh, a shout out to Wiper and True, one of Bristol's finest brewers, um, who came and actually did the, uh, did the booze uh, on the party day, and they left a couple of these bad boys behind. I mean, if that doesn't say some kind of sci-fi oxygen tank, I don't know what does. I was debating painting them, Actually, kind of dig it. Given the size of the cockpit, I'm not quite sure where they're gonna go. I kind of like the idea of them actually being on the two kind of top sides, but because of the size of the space, I don't know if they're really gonna fit. They might just obscure too much of the shot. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna keep them available and I might end up just putting them in like behind Pete or somewhere and just use them a point of interest. So I might actually just keep them loose, 
just so that when we start framing up and there's like, oh no, we've run out of background, we can just pop a couple of those bad boys in to fill the frame. Always handy to have stuff like that that's not fastened down, that's big, that you can just throw into a space to fill it. Right, so kind of base layer of the cockpit is done. What I'm going to do next, I'm going to bring the chair in, sit it in place, I'm going to line up the kind of the wide shot where we're kind of seeing everything. And then I'm going to sit in it and then I'm just going to kind of feel my way a little bit. I've got lots of stuff that I've been collecting over the months. I always get excited uh, by packaging uh, from, from things. They've just got really cool shapes. It's the kind of thing you can imagine being in a ship and just being bolted against the wall and you're thinking, yeah, that looks like that's a thing that would be there. I don't know what it is, but it doesn't matter. A bit of hoover. This could be quite cool because it's transparent and so, or translucent, so we could actually put a light through there, which, which would look pretty dope. Smaller bits, you know. And then of course we've got some of JP's control panel stuff. I've got some other stuff I can put in there, some tubing, just throwing stuff at it. Um, but I'm not going to attach anything yet. I'm going to put it in, see what works, probably just tack it in place. Then I can pull it all out, paint it outside and then bring it in. Okay, so monitors are up. We've got our old school monitor here. I might put a bit of green gel over that or something just to make it a bit more interesting. Got a field monitor mounted on the bracket it came with it. Got this guy here, which I've just used a little hot shoe ball head um, mount because it's a quarter inch screw underneath as a monitor would be as you'd expect. I have tried to run a signal through it and as it turns out, it doesn't work. Well, it's got a couple of lights on it. That'll do, we'll go with that. Got a nice serene bit of uh, bit of oceanic interest going on on that one there. Those are in, obviously these are ready for iPads. Got our little kind of desk here. There's gonna be a, a wireless keyboard, it's gonna go on there. This whole like crazy brutalist mounting bracket here is actually a piece of uh, polystyrene packaging. The space is relatively filled. There's nothing much below this point, but that's because Pete is going to sit here and we wouldn't see any of it anyway. And I'm not going to start adding loads of stuff that we're not going to see. So the last bit of coverage really is just this top part here. And what I've done is I've painted a couple of, these are actually um, cardboard sort of colorama tubes that you get to rolls of paper on. Um, so I've painted those grey and then what I've done is I've made a couple of brackets. I could have just stuck them onto the wall but I kind of thought well when you've got serious piping going on you've usually got a bracket for it and that's literally just a piece of ply that I have cut a couple of holes out around there as you can see and then just painted it black and then that will go up there like that. So we've got some some interesting pipe work going on. Now all that's left is to get these old panels wired. They've been in a box in JP's lockup for some time and by his own admission, he left them in that box in a bit of a mess. So I removed all the old solder and glue so he could rewire everything. Thanks, Japes. I set up a camera on the inside of the cockpit with a feed to the exterior where he was working so he could see when the connection was good. All the dials inside are in fact paper prints of dials, backed by the tops of soda cans, with an LED in each of them to light them up. Genius. Once all the panels are wired, we're ready to shoot. The tablets go into their sleeves. I actually ended up screwing the mounting blocks into the walls and attaching the sleeves with Velcro. This way, they're more easily removable. <laughs> oh, I am struggling to contain my excitement just because today is... It's cockpit shoot day! Ah! I just love all of the attachments and useful things that you get with these dado sets. We're looking to mount our headlights for the sub so that we're going to fill the room with smoke and have a couple of headlights going on to light up the smokiness uh, for that same kind of dry for wet effect. So I'm using these brackets that you actually get as part of the dado set to mount them. What's nice is, of course, is our dado's dimmable. So we can really just make sure they're just right. Sublight! <laughs> 
<laughs> so much work has led us here. Can't quite get over the fact that we're actually about to film the bloody thing. <laughs> Feel free to twizzle some knobs, um, flick, flick, a, flick a few switches, who knows what they'll do. Very good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey humans, forgive the interruption. I'm just here to remind you to like this video if you're enjoying it, to comment on it, that always helps, and share this video with your friends and enemies if you like. We just want to get the word out there. Ta-ta. I rig a daylight LED panel with a blue gel and heavy diffusion on the floor at the front of the sub to light the space and provide a bit of a backlight on Pete. Then we rig a small LED top light with plus green gel to complement our blue. This was intended as a practical work light, although we won't see it in shot, but it does look kind of cool. We couldn't resist putting a certain TV favourite of ours on one of the monitors for the opening shot. Just a little something there for those that notice. We're pretty much ready. It's very dark on the, the back of Pete, and so I just want a little bit of something, just, just so that we can see what it is. I'm, otherwise, I'm just worried it's a little bit dark. I like that everything's dark around him. All of those lights are just pinging and that's all we need. But yeah, I think it's literally just to lift him in the center up a little bit. So we're gonna see if we can just bounce a little something off the floor. Got it. And then just reach for the buttons you're gonna reach for. I'm just throwing blackout over the whole thing. I'm not going to say this is watertight. <laughs> and this, this way, any of those holes where I slightly miscut for the panels to go in and whatnot means it'll just all be proper blacked out. You know you're doing something fun when the smoke machine comes out. It's like the Explorers in here. This is brilliant. Well, we're in a dark, smoky room again. So we rigged our two barrels onto arms so they sit either side of Pete. They kind of almost look like jet engines and those glossy surfaces pick up the light really nicely. For the shot where the sub descends from the shimmering surface, we sought to replicate the surface shimmer by bouncing the light from our dados with a silver bounce. JP gives it a wiggle to create some shimmer. So we've actually realised that it is actually a year to the day that we shot the miniature submarine in this same room. <sighs> been a long time. This is what happens with these things, you know, I mean, there's been a lot of building to do and, and all of that. And, you know, originally when we started out, we were just going to demonstrate a dry for wet thing. And then I was like, oh, hold on. What if we do a whole sequence of build a cockpit sci-fi style? And whew, it seemed like a madman's dreams at the time. But you know what? We just went for it and here we are. That's what you got to do. You got to persevere, right? So we start running through our shot list. I just talk Pete through the action as we shoot, as we're not using any sound for these shots. So you're gonna like feel the beat, yeah, boom, the hell was that? Look around and then check your monitor. The last shot from the back has the sub failing as sparks fly from the control panels. JP rigged E-matches for this. He went big on the first one, which was fun, but a little much. So we scaled it back to one spark followed by lighting cues as the system fails. For our frontal shots, we shot through the glass of the washing machine door as it just warped all those panel lights beautifully. As there's no rear section to the set, we simply draped blackout behind Pete. The porthole glass also helped hide this by warping the image and the lights, providing plenty of distraction. Then we opened her up for the close-ups. We frame up to make the most of our panels. I positioned one of them to Pete's right specifically so that we'd see all of those lovely lights out of focus behind him. This is essentially kind of working as our key light here and we've just cheated it round a little bit. It's always nice to kind of light on the far side of a person's face, right? Kind of more lit on the, on the, on the far side, a little darker here, but I'm still keeping that up light there just um, for consistency as much as anything. We are as wide as we can, so we've got an 11 millimeter lens on here to go for a bit of that slightly kind of CCTV vibe for this shot. There's a moment where Pete looks to camera, the idea being that he's kind of looking to us, so we're monitoring this shot in the cockpit. Uh, and so what I wanted to get is a look from Pete to us up there on the surface. The only way to sort of convey that would be with a kind of a CCTV shot. So they've got the image that they're monitoring, we 
got the image that we're monitoring on the surface and that's what we're recreating here so wide angle in my face when I start flicking switches like this it's great because it really shows how how close that lens is so it's, it's really just like that's part of the wall Okay, comms check coming in. You hear me? You yeah. That? Copy check. Got you loud and clear. We run through our shots, replaying some of the actions we shot from behind so we can cut between them if we need to. Bang! We built this cockpit because we wanted to demonstrate that you can shoot miniature photography on a shoestring that can cut seamlessly with live action. Hopefully you feel we came somewhere close. Slap yourself. Do it again. How's it feel? It feels good. The Tuck Pendleton machine, zero defects. <sighs> oh, I guess I've just got to figure out what to do with this thing now. In the meantime, while I ponder the very real likelihood that I'm going to have to disassemble this beautiful thing, you be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon, people. Next up, JP's going to get his make on as he builds us a seven foot long submarine out of paper and quite a lot of other stuff. And then we shoot the biggie. So brace yourselves and we'll see you for the next one.